Welcome back my lovely sims and today we will be having a soulmate AU video with Bako Akatsuki X listener. I was on to write it, I'll be leaving the link in the description below and the idea from this fanfic was from the movie Your Name. I advise you guys to check it out, it's pretty good. No further ado, let's begin. Everyone had a soulmate. Children, teens, young adults, and even elderly people had a soulmate. Some people met their soulmate in their lifetime, others didn't. Maybe they met in this lifetime, but not the last. The thing about soulmates are they that you don't know if you, el if you will ever, ever meet them. That scared a lot of kids. The thought about never finding the true love. But for some people, it was easier than others. Some had a red long string going around your pinky finger and all the way to your soulmate. Others could talk through their soulmate's mind. And some weren't so lucky and had the person's eye color on their wrist or matching tattoos somewhere on their body. And with you, you had something different. You switched bodies with your soulmate. It happened randomly, usually after you gone to bed. You could wake up in your body. The time spent in your body was usually one day, so you would wake up the next day in your own. But sometimes it would last longer. You would go to sleep and wake up still in the other person's body. All of this started a couple of weeks ago. The first time it happened, it was a Saturday morning. You opened your eyes to see a new white roof over your head, one that you have never seen before. Looking to your left, you saw a white brick wall, and looking to your right, you saw a desk with a laptop and a phone on it. Right next to the desk was a closet and a window. Getting out of the bed, you looked down at your feet that didn't quite look like yours. You had bigger feet, and you, was wear you were wearing sweatpants, and what looked like a to be a white t-shirt. Looking around the room, you ended up finding a small mirror in the desk. Taking out the mirror, you almost dropped it. Looking back at was a teenage boy with spiky blonde hair and blood red eyes. What was going on? Just a couple of seconds later, a woman's voice spoke. Koski, it's late, get up! Your first th thought was, who's Koski? But you soon realized that was the bot body you were in was owned by a boy named Koski, and the person yelling now was most likely his mother. After calming herself down, you went off to pick up the phone. The time said 1.37pm. The background picture was an explosion. Weird. You tried unlocking the phone, and by the third try, you did it. The password was pretty easy. One that anyone would be able to guess. Looking through the phone, there wasn't a lot of apps. You had YouTube, messages, phone, and all other apps that everyone has. It didn't seem like he used his phone a lot of time. You continued to look through it, and he found notes. For a second, you just looked at it. Then an idea came to your mind. You opened the app and started writing. When you were done, you found a sticky note in the backpack that you didn't see before now. Finding a pen, you also started writing a note that said to take his note in his phone. After that, you decided to get dressed. That took you a while, trying not to look at anything. The rest of your first day was spent at the house and trying not to talk to his parents, which didn't go that well. His mother was confused, and his father didn't react at all which made you even more confused. When you went to bed, you woke up in your own body, seeing the familiar roof and walls. Your first thought was that it was a dream, just a simple dream, but there was something new. There was a note by your phone. Picking up a note, you froze. The note said, who are you? Time to skip. A couple of weeks later, after the first time you had changed bodies with the spiky blonde haired boy, 
You were walking to your home. You had been at school. Your school life wasn't the best. You didn't have a lot of friends, just one, one close one. The rest of your school either ignored you or just made fun of you. You had stopped paying attention to that though. You were used to it, so... When the school days finally were over, you were happy. Just wanted to get home, wanting to be someone else. The relationship you had with the blonde boy was confusing. You had learned his full name was Kasuki Bakugo. His mother's name was Mitsuki, or what he called her, Old Hag. And his father's name was Masaru. He had some friends that he called extras. Their name was Mina Ashiro, Eiji Kishima, Tenki Kamnari, and Hanta Zero. He had also learned he hates this one boy that he called Deku. He still hasn't learned his real name. He wasn't the brightest person, person, but he had his charms. He cared somewhat for his friends and he has a passion for being the best hero. You had also found out where he lives. He lived around one hour away from you, by feet. When you found that out, your heart skipped a beat. You could actually meet him. The hardest thing about searching bodies was that you couldn't act like him. He's easily annoyed, and got angry, and he never smiled, and you were a quiet person that didn't talk a lot to other people, but you were nice to your friend and your family. So you guys was total opposites. So the time you had to go to him at school, to school were the hardest days. You also didn't understand the school subjects. You didn't really want to become a hero. You didn't have a good enough quirk, so being a hero was never an option. Because you had a powerful quirk. You didn't know how to use it though. At least you were not unlucky enough not to have to switch bodies with him the days he had to use his quirk. When it came to what happened with your life, it was different. The people who used to make fun of you were now scared of you. And was avoiding you. And your friend started asking if you were having a good or a bad day. Your parents, surprisingly, didn't pay no any mind. They just thought you were going through a phase as a teenager. But now, you really wanted to meet him. The way you guys talked was through notes, so when you were in his body, you used notes to tell him what happened and how everything went. He did the same. Every night you wanted to wake up in his body. It was like an adventure, going through to another world with new people and a new start. It made you happy not having to deal with what's going on in your own life. Just being able to be another person, just for one day, was like a gift from the above. Sadly, you didn't change bodies every day. Sometimes you changed two days in a row, and other times it went a week before you guys changed. You started see seeing your house and walking up to the door and opening the door. Your parents were watching TV. You paid them no mind and walked to the kitchen to get some food. To get back from the pantry, you started walking to your room. It had been warm, a warm day, so you turned on a fan and started doing your school work. The hours went by slowly. It was like everything was put into slow motion. The questions looking longer and the time ticking slower. Finally, when you wrote the last word down, you put back all your school work and got ready to go to bed. Being as tired as you was, you soon fell into a deep sleep. Your last thought was as you hoped you would be in Kasuke's body. The sound of a somewhat familiar alarm woke you up. Seeing the white roof and the white brick wall, the room that belonged to no other than Kasuki Bakugo. The time was 7.30am on a Wednesday morning. You went to check his schedule to make sure you wouldn't mess anything up. And it seemed to be a normal day. Normal classes like math and chemistry. Chemistry. You soon jumped out of bed with a happy smile on your face. Happy not to be you. You quickly put on his school uniform. I went down the stairs. 
Mitski in the kitchen and master in the sofa. He walked towards Mitski. Good morning. He said, completely forgetting you are not you. Good morning? She questioned, are you sick, Kalsuki? That reminded you. Oh yeah, I'm fine. I'm going to school now. Bye. We started walking out of the house as fast as he could, not wanting to make her more confused. The walk to school was nothing special. You could see some of his classmates walking the same way. Trying to act like him, he said nothing to them. The walk wasn't long, so he soon got to the school grounds. Walking to your seat, or Katsuki's seat, he sat down. Not long afterward, the red-headed boy Adrian Kishima came over. Good morning, Baku bro. Morning. You tried your best to sound like him. You had his voice, but the way he talked was different though from the way he talked. Ready for class? Of course I am. After that, the teacher came in the room. The rest of the day was spent around the Baku squad, aka Bakuko's friends. The day was over way too quickly. You had to go home. Before you walked out of the classroom, a green haired boy came up to you. Kachan, are you okay? You've been acting differently. Had he noticed? Had it been that obvious? Of course I'm fine. Now move it extra. That line, Katsuki has said you should use to get out of a conversation. But before the green haired boy could continue, you walked out of the classroom, taking a deep breath after getting out of the school grounds. The warm summer wind hit your face. Walking to Katsuki's house was relaxing. You really needed not to have to deal with your own life. Soon you were at Katsuki's house. You walked in and went straight to his room. You tried your best to do his homework, but you didn't understand any of it. So you ended up giving up. Deciding to start writing in the notes. Soon afterward. Ten minutes later, you got ready for bed, closing your eyes and relaxing in the soft bed. The next day, you were in your own body. Your phone alarm woke you up. Now it was Thursday morning, 7.30am. You quickly checked your nose and found that your class was going on a trip. They didn't say where you were going, so you didn't know what to do. You started packing a bag with all the stuff you thought you might need it. Of course, the one day you weren't in your own body, the school had decided to go on a trip the very next day. You checked your clock to see you, that you were going to be late if you didn't leave right now. You quickly started running downstairs. You put on some clothes earlier, so you only needed to put on your shoes. After the shoes were on, you started running to school. When you finally got to your school, you just made it. The start of the first lesson was just about what everyone should do if they ended up alone, without the class. And about 45 minutes later, everyone was ready to go on the bus. When everyone got on the bus, the bus started arriving. To pass some time, you took out your headphones and started playing songs from your playlist. Your friend sat beside you and started some conversation with you. The bus drive lasted a little while, but you got to your destination quickly. Your class started walking around. It was warm outside, so it started getting hot. Looking around the place, you saw something or someone in the corner of your eye. You quickly turned around to see what it was, but it was soon gone. You had a feeling you had to figure out who or what that was. Your feet started moving without you thinking, and you started walking to the place you had seen the thing. Walking to, throughout a crowd of people, you saw it. Sparky hair, blood red eyes staring back at you. Time stopped, stopped and your heart speeded up. Your locked eyes 
Gilbert Katz Gilbert Gott. Wir sind mit. That was the fanfiction. Um, this is the longest one I've ever written. Uh, maybe it's, it will not be the longest video. I don't know how long this video will last, but it is 2152 words. So I'm pretty proud of that. Um, sorry that this video came out a little bit late. I was just on a vacation. And if the mic quality is kind of bad, I'm sorry. My headphones are broken. So I have to use airbuds, but I hope that's okay for now. Hope you guys will have a good night or afternoon. I will be leaving my Discord server in the description below. Bye bye!